acreage where we can plant a small orchard. Um, peaches and uh, apricots, nectarines are all self-fertile, so you don't have to worry about those. One tree will do you. Um, the uh, fig tree, they uh, don't need a pollinator, they're all on their own. Um, that's one that's you, you need to make sure you check the variety that you get. Some of them are sevens, some of them are eights. So, um, and, and we do bring in eights. We are a zone seven here. Um, so if you see a zone eight, we can teach you how to protect and kind of create a, a microclimate for that tree um, so you won't lose it. Um, typically, Winters aren't quite as cold as it's been this year. Um, this has been kind of a record-breaking year for cold and snow, water, rain, all that stuff. So um, we're excited about it because we're going to have uh, great things uh, coming on this spring. Um, we don't have to worry about our irrigation systems. Nobody should have been turning on your irrigation systems because we, they just don't need it right now. Um, the ground is very well saturated. Um, other things we're going to talk about today are the different fruits. Uh, rhubarb, strawberries, blueberries, uh, grapes do really well here. Um, blackberries, raspberries, I think I got the whole gambit of it. Um, citrus. Citrus will grow in the summertime. Um, most people will keep, if they like citrus, keep it small. You take it out in the summertime, you bring it in in the winter. Um, and we will have some citrus later on, um, we're hoping. Last year we couldn't get it. There was something um, keeping us from getting it. I don't know, I can't remember if it was a trucking issue or an issue with the citrus itself um, from the growers. So um, we didn't get any, but we're, we've got a line on it this year, so we're hoping. Um, things to think about before you buy a tree. Can't hear me now? Okay. Uh, things before think about before you buy a tree. Um, again, it's about pollination. Um, apples, we're going to have these charts set up. Um, in our fruit tree area, so they're accessible. Um, also, we are going to pass this around. If you guys will sign in, give us your email address. We're going to take pictures, or we'll send you the graphic, um, so you'll have these charts. Um, so, oh, there you go. We can have one for peaches. Yes. Um, so um, if you sign up on that, we'll, we'll get you everything that we, we kind of talked about. Um, apples and pears and cherries are the ones that really need to have a pollinator. Um, that being said, there are a few that are self-fertile. Um, Stella's, Lapin um, are all self-pollinating cherries. Uh, Fuji is one of the self, semi self fertile apples. Um, so there's a, a variety that you can always get that if you just need the one tree, there are ways to get around it. Um, chill hours. Um, all trees have chill hours, and that's the amount of cold they are the time they need to remain in dormancy before they start fruiting um, so the longer the chill hours the later they'll bloom which is what we want here um, your peaches your apricots and nectarines unfortunately are one of the first ones to bloom which is why sometimes we get crops sometimes we don't um, plums are usually next, followed by cherries, apples, and pears. So usually apples and pears are one of those crops that you'll get more often than the peaches. Um, 
Fruit trees make great ornamental trees, so if you have small yards, they, they make great shade trees. They, most of them are going to get in that 15 to 20 foot range, um, and that's a semi-dwarf. Um, the regular trees are going to get in that 30 foot range. Um, with true dwarf trees, they're going to stay in that four to, five, uh, four to six foot range. Um, so when you ask for a dwarf tree, that's what you're going to get as far as that goes. Uh, fruit trees don't mind being topped, which is a really nice thing. So once they get to that 12, uh, 15 foot, if you want to top them, um, you will be able to um, make them spread out a little bit more so you'll get more tree space, but you're not going to have to climb a ladder to pick your fruit. A lot of fruit trees will, um, you'll notice really small fruits when, when it comes to, it starts getting bigger and they'll stay small. I get a lot of questions on why is my fruit small? Um, a lot of times, it's the tree is not large enough. There's too much fruit, so you do need to call that out. Um, you want to pick the clumps. Usually, there'll be like five or six, eight pieces of fruit in one small spot space. Pick it off when it's the size of a ping pong ball. If you pick it off at that point, the rest of your fruit's going to get larger. Um, it gets better airflow, uh, so you'll uh, be able to um, have larger, better fruit. Um, a lot of dropping, if your tree is dropping the fruit, um, it's kind of the tree's way of saying, hey, I can't handle this, so it's going to drop anyway. Um, and it's a natural process. Um, but if you help it out, it'll keep the tree from doing that. Um, we always recommend if you plant a new fruit tree that um, you do cull off for the first year or two as much of the fruit as possible um, because you want that all that energy that's going to the fruit tree to go to the root system. Um, you want healthy roots in order to get the fruit. Um, don't pick it all off because um, you want to eat a few pieces, but. Um, you'll help your tree in the long run if you do that. You, he asked if you um, you do it when the buds are there or if you wait till the fruit is there. You want the fruit to be about ping pong ball size um, before you start picking, um, and that. That way you know if it's actually going to produce fruit. Sometimes if you start picking before, you're going to um, pick more off than you need to. Um, yes? How close do the pollinators need to be to each other? Usually with pollination, as long as they're within 50 feet of each other, you'll get good pollination. And then one more question. Can you plant an apple next to a pear, a pear next to a plum, a plum next to a cherry? Um, her question is, can you mix and match? Mix and match. Um, you can, but they're not all going to pollinate each other. Um, fruit trees, you, you need two apples to pollinate each other. Um, and they have to be different species. You can't have two red delicious to pollinate. They don't, they don't get along, I guess. Um, so you would need a red, a red delicious or a Fuji in order to <coughs> pollinate. A pear in the mix is not going to mess up the pollination of the apples. Correct. Um, right now, uh, all your fruit trees have not, hopefully haven't started budding out yet. Um, one thing I want to really mention, now is a great time to get the dormant oil on. Um, this product is a mineral oil base. Uh, it um, will suffocate any aphids, thrips, white flies that are hanging out on your tree. 
uh, so that so you'll have less likely to have the bugs and issues that come on later on. Um, you spray them on. This is a concentrate, so you just mix it up in a sprayer bottle. Uh, spray it on the dormant tree. Make sure all the bark, limbs, everything is covered. Um, that way you get a nice coating so it'll uh, kill everything that's on there. Yes, ma'am? Is it better um, than doing that before or after pruning? Her question was, do you want to do it before or after pruning? Um, it really doesn't matter. It, it, it is a mineral oil-based product, so if you prune, it'll be fine. Uh, it's not going to hurt it at all. If we block trees here, we haven't been planted yet. No. Uh, his question was, is if you buy trees, have they been coated yet? They have not. Uh, so, you know, if you get them home, definitely I would do it. Um, or just kind of keep an eye out for aphids kind of fly in with the wind so they will come whether you do this or not uh, this just keeps the ones that have kind of overwintered here in check do you have to do it after a rain again or is it the season? his question was if you have to do it after a rain or not um, it, it puts a pretty good coating on it and this is only for when it's dormant. Uh, there is another time that we're going to use it, especially for your apples and pears, and I'll get into that later. Um, netting. We were talking about netting earlier. Um, with your fruit trees, the birds will be your best friend. Uh, we have all sorts of type of netting. Netting, if you do it soon enough, you're going to protect most of your fruit from getting eaten by the birds, especially those cherries. They, they love the cherries. Strawberries, raspberries, pretty much any of the berries and the small fruits that they really like. Um, I've seen some work on apples and pears, but usually that's the squirrels and other, other things will get the bigger stuff. Um, so, Netting is really important. Try to get it on early enough. Uh, usually if you start seeing birds, they're going to get it before you will ever get the bed on. So this is kind of a calendar of events um, for your fruit trees. January, February, dormant oil. Uh, for it, uh, bug eggs and fungal issues. March, February and March, you want to make sure all the pruning is done. That's where you thin out the branches that are going to cross, um, give you space and air, airflow within the tree. Uh, March and April, you want to fertilize for your, you'll get a copy of this too while we're talking about it. Um, March and April fertilize. Uh, for those of you with apple trees, this is the time you want to start spraying. When, once you have your flowers um, blooming and the petals start falling, that's when you're going to start seeing the coddling moth. All of those uh, apples that you get that have the brown spots in them, that's from a coddling moth. They lay their eggs in the flower itself. As the larva gets bigger, they crawl out of your apples. So it's not so much something going in, it's something coming out. So if you spray that dormant oil, as the flower petals are starting to fall off, you'll, you'll make sure you'll kill most of those eggs. Um, there are, usually what we recommend you do in your apple and pear trees is these are little tents. It's little square uh, tent that has a pheromone in it. Um, so the moths will come in here. Once you start seeing moths in here, that's when you can start spraying. Um, you're going to spray probably two or three weeks worth on the flowers itself um, because it's, all the flowers do not come out at the same time. So you'll, you'll, 
you'll do it periodically. That way you can cover more of the flowers and you won't have as many holes. Will that kill bees? Spraying. Her question was, is, does the uh, dormant oil kill bees? If you spray them, yes. So what we recommend when you do any spraying of any insecticides, the dormant oils or anything else, you want to do it early, early in the morning before the wind comes up and before the bees are active, or later in the evening if you don't have a windy, uh, a windy time, um, the bees, usually as dust comes, the bees go away. So you just want to make sure the bees aren't active at that point in time. So it's not toxic to them if they're getting Well, if, if they get it on them, then it will kill them. But just uh, that's why you do it in the early morning time, so it, uh, there's not as many. If, um, can they transfer it to the uh, hive or nest or whatever? The dormant, the her question it. was is if, if you'll, you can transfer it to a, a nest of bees. No, the dormant oil is a contact killer. So if they get sprayed, yes, they're going to die. Um, but they won't take it back to their, their hunt hive. Yes, ma'am? Will the bug lights ever kill the cottonwoods? Sometimes, her question was, is will bug lights kill cottonwood moths? Um, usually they're around your yard, they, they kind of hang out in your grass, uh, if you have a, a lawn. Um, not a lot of them, most bug zappers are kind of in patio areas. It, unless you put it in a tree, you might be able to get rid of some of them. But uh, if you have small trees, usually a couple of these will take care of a lot of them. If you have larger trees, I definitely recommend the, the dormant oil. And, and these, so you know when they're there. For my pear tree, uh, last year we tried this. Uh, I probably needed more because they got there, but we still had the issue. That's not a problem. Do I do the dormant oil now on my little peach tree and the pear tree, and then once the blossoms come out, do it again? Her question was, Is it, uh, does she need to do it now? And then as the blossoms come out, yes. Um, because you're coating the bark, trying to get rid of aphids and fungal issues. Uh, the coddling moths are not out yet, quite yet. Uh, usually when flowers start showing up, that's when they start coming in. Can we use this dormant oil on roses? Her question was, can you use the dormant oil on roses as well? Yes, you can. Anything that's dormant, um, all trees, like uh, ashes, they tend to get aphids a lot. Uh, so you can do that all uh, on any tree that you have issues with. Okay, so we were in March, April and June. You kind of just wait and watch your tree grow. Um, look for bugs and fungus. Like I said, they blow in with the wind. Um, just because you did all the precautions doesn't mean you're safe. Um, if the wind blows the right direction, you will get issues. So check your tr trees periodically throughout the week. Um, it's not something that you can just plant them and walk away and then go harvest. Uh, pay attention to your yard. You know, it, it, it's an investment, so you don't want something to happen to it. Um, June, your fruit's going to start getting to the right size. If you need to do any thinning, that's usually the time period that you're going to do it. Um, July, uh, you're going to fertilize again. We like to say you're going to fertilize with the holidays here. So Easter, Fourth of July, Halloween, and for your evergreens, you add the New Year's uh, time period. August, harvest, excitement, uh, your cherries, um, um, sorry, go back to July. Some of your peaches, your cherries, and apricots are going to start being ready to go. August, harvest for cherries, peaches, plums, nectarines, and apricots. September, your apples and pears are usually going to start 
popping. And in October, um, the rest of your apples and pears, you're going to fertilize again. November, everybody that does canning and freezing and all that stuff, you can start enjoying all that stuff. <coughs> your reefs of your harvest. Okay. Stay. How do you know when fruit's ripe? Uh, pears, if you, in September, if you cut a pear apart, you're looking for light brown seeds. Usually if you push the bottom where the uh, flower bud was, uh, it'll start being soft right in that spot. That's what you want. Um, pears and apples, most of them have a really nice shelf life if you keep them in a cool spot. Uh, so you can you can harvest, put them in a cool spot and, and leave them there for a month or two. Um, apples, when you slice them, you're going to see dark brown seeds. Uh, your sh fruit skin is going to be shiny, bright and shiny instead of dull. Um, as, as it ripens, it's going to get brighter and brighter as far as your color goes. Um, the blush, usually there's a spot of red, you'll see more of that. Apricots, when they ripen, it, it's more of just a touch. You're, they're gonna start feeling nice and soft, and so that's when you can pick those. Uh, cherries will be dark, dark, bright, bright red, except for your rain ears, where you know, they, they have a little bit different color. Um, but they're not gonna be nice and big. And those you can just pop in your mouth if they're sweet. The longer you leave them on your tree, the sweeter they're going to get. Um, figs, your, your twig, the stem will start drooping. Um, and then those, the tops of your figs are going to turn uh, uh, kind of a nice caramely brown. And then peaches will come off with a twist. So as soon as you can twist it and it just pops off, they're ready. Okay, went through that pretty fast. Um, questions about anything that I talked about so far? Okay, sir? Should I ask that? Correct. Uh, fertilizer, all purpose. Uh, Ken Lane has specially formulated this for this area. Uh, it is incorporated with sulfur that helps lower the pH. It's a slow release. Uh, organic, pet-friendly uh, fertilizer. Uh, we always call ourselves lazy gardeners here. You just throw it out. You don't have to work it in. If you want to, go ahead. Um, with the rain, snows, it'll just sink into the, into the soil and the ground. His question was how much to put on. Um, the directions are on here, um, but basically it's two cups per inch on the tree. Uh, so you just put it around the drip line of your tree. The amount that you put on is important. Um, the nice thing about this fertilizer is there is a price break. The more you buy, the less, it, you, the less price you have to pay. If those pesky insects come on, multi-purpose spray um, is great for aphids. You just mix it up in a spray bottle, aphids, white flies, that type of thing. Again, you want to do it early in the morning so you can catch it before the bees start hitting it because if it, they get hit with it, they will die. Um, copper fungicide, if you have a fungal issue, this is great stuff. There is also Revitalize, which is a systemic drench. Either one will do really well for fruit trees. I like the copper because it's not a systemic. <coughs> strawberries. Uh, strawberries do really well here. Um, if you put them, uh, you just plant them in. There are two different types of strawberries. There's Juneberry and Everberry. So if you like to can and you like harvest all at once, the Juneberry is probably the one you want. If you like to pick and choose a little bit at a time, you 
you are going to be picking out, if you get the everbearing, you'll, you'll get crops all through the summer. I'm sorry, I had one more tree question, water. Okay. What do you think about water wells around trees? Her question was, is about water wells on your trees. We recommend, water wells are great. Is When you're watering, you want to water deeply less often. Uh, we recommend for new trees, twice a week watering, um, and it depends on the bucket size. When you buy a tree, we give you a planting guide and it has a, a graph of how much water you should use. Um, but if you get a five gallon tree, you're gonna water five gallons twice a week for the first year. Um, once it gets bigger, you're gonna do You'll, you're just going to accumulate that water as it, as it, the tree grows. Um, but we don't like to water every other day. If you're doing that, you're doing yourself more harm than good uh, because you're not getting a nice deep root system. Um, if you water often, your roots are going to stay on the top of the ground um, and they don't, because you're watering, they don't have to go anywhere. They're going to stay there. Um, his question is so you don't necessarily need a drip system not necessarily it, it's you need the drip system to do what you want it to do uh, so if you're putting in a drip system I recommend a couple of different zones for your plants your trees are going to need a whole lot more water than your perennials and, and smaller stuff um, so if you can create different zones, you can set the trees to water once a week and your smaller stuff to do it twice a week. Even your shrubs and stuff, once they're established, once a week is usually plenty if you're giving them enough water. Um, people will come in and ask, well, I don't know why my plant's dying. And I'll, the first question I ask is, how much water are you giving it? I don't know, I've got a drip system. That doesn't tell me anything. You need to know how much volume is coming out of those emitters. That's what you need to know. Um, because that's gonna tell you how deep the water is, goes. And it takes a long time for that water to get to the bottom. So be really careful with your water. Most people kill their plants with kindness opposed to neglect. They end up killing them because they got too much water. Yes, sir? Is there a difference in size between a door and a semi his question was, is, is there a difference between fruit size between a dwarf and a semi-dwarf? Not usually. Um, the pixie peach says it has regular size peach fruit, so it should be the same. Um, all varieties are going to be a little bit different. Um, so it, I would say probably it depends on the tree, but usually it, it's pretty form a, formal size, correct. Um, I'd like to show you some fruit trees if you want. Did you ask a question? My peach tree and the larger limbs bark instead of being smooth in some areas of all Her question was is that she's got some crinkly bark on some of her larger limbs. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know exactly, but what we kind of do around here. If you bring us pictures, we have a microscope down below. Uh, we can usually diagnose fungal and bug issues. Um, if it's something more complicated, we usually get your name and number and we do some research for you and try to figure out what's going on with that. Yes, I have two apple trees and I don't know what kind they are. We bought the house and they were already there. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to pruning, I don't know her question I, I don't was: know, Is taken care of and they've grown, or should I just really? Her question was about: uh, She's got a couple of apple trees that kind of came with the house that she bought, um, and she doesn't know if she needs to prune. Um, pruning is necessary no matter what kind of trees you get. Um, you want to make sure that inside of your tree itself has nice airflow. You don't want intersecting branches. Um, that can rub because you're going to get damage and stuff like that. It also makes it easier to pick if, if the inside's kind of thinned out. 
Um, we have a whole fruit uh, pruning class online. If you go to YouTube, uh, you can watch that. Um, basically, tree pruning is tree pruning, and, and the, the principle is kind of the same. Um, you're, you're just trying to keep damage and being able to, if, for your fruit trees, you want to be able to pick it. When you're pruning, though, if you're buying new trees, how many years should you let those go before you start the pruning process? His question was, is how long do you wait to start pruning? We recommend if you're buying a new tree, you want to give them at least three years before you start pruning. Um, every time you prune a tree, it tells a tree, oh, something happened, I need to sprout more. Um, every time they sprout more, they take energy from your roots. So unless you have a damaged branch or something like that, you really want to make sure that you, you, you let that root system get established. It usually takes three years for something to get established. Um, we usually say sleep, creep, and weep. Uh, so the first year is all about the roots. The second year, you'll get some growth and some nice things going on. And your third year it is when they really take off. And that's when you can start doing some initial pruning on that. Yes? You know, you were at my house was a year ago, and I had the, the, the fruit trees, I wanted them to get a little bit smaller so I can maintain them. And um, so I had a company come out, and they just did the third. Mm -hmm. So now all the new sprouts, are still back up there and you know how damaging is it to bring it you know put down more than that third Her, she, she had some original trees that she had a company come out and uh, trim down trees just will grow so you can take that third off every year but i want it to get down smaller than that third um if you do more than a third, you're going to hurt your, your tree. And maybe lose fruit crop. Correct. First yes. Year. yes. And then the second part of the question is, um, so everything's budding now, and I haven't pruned yet. It's a, how, if, much of the, how much of the particular fruit trees are the fruit out on the ends? Her, her, her tree is budding out, and she doesn't know how much. She hasn't pruned yet. Basically, if you trim it out now, you're going to lose some of that. Um, it, it, it kind of depends on your tree. Uh, some trees have uh, fruit budding all the way down, like this guy. Um, so if you trim off a few edges, you're not going to hurt it. Um, but if you don't like uh, have a tree, most of these are all that way, so yours should be pretty close. But it, it would depend on your tree. Um, if you don't have buds all the way down, I, I would be really careful or you're not going to get your fruit. Okay. Uh, this is the true dwarf, and this is the, the peach tree. Uh, this is the pixie, uh, four to uh, six foot tall and wide. Um, you were asking about the fruit, and like I said, the pictures, the fruit is going to be regular size. Um, Red Haven peach, Reliance peach, Alberta peach, um, all the peach trees. Are going to give you good peaches. Um, all of these have um, usually between seven and eight hundred chill hours. Again, unfortunately, these guys fruit bloom first, so we're fixing to go. Uh, like I said, these guys make great ornamental trees as well as fruiting trees. They have beautiful pink buds, um, so they're, they're you're, you're going to have that spring interest. They turn yellow orange in the fall, so you can get some color. Um, your fruit's going to be nice and sweet, uh, so you, these are really nice trees. Yes? They're starting to bud that early and you get a really bad cold snap for a few days where it's in the 20s at night. Is that going to kill off? His question was about uh, the peach trees budding out so early. Um, <coughs> there are several methods that you can kind of help them along. If you plant them, 
uh, strategically on an east or northeast side where you're not going to get that western afternoon sun blooming on them you're going to get yourself a week or two of extra blooming time or before they bloom time uh, because it, it's the, the sun, western sunshine in the afternoons that make them do this so if you can keep them in a shadier spot um, from that hot sun that when we have 65 degrees and we're saying yay um, the tree says yay too it's time to bloom so um, create microclimates and you'll keep them that could be a problem at night i guess i've had people tell me they, they string old-fashioned uh, christmas lights through it um, they produce that heat that will keep them a little bit warmer uh, if it's a small enough tree you can definitely wrap them with with uh, frost cloth and then we do have some down on the lower house yeah is the red haven is that a freestone yes his first question was it was the red haven freestone most of the trees are freestone there's just a few peaches and i don't remember off the top of my head which ones are clean um, but most of them are freestone um, we have a Hanko um, nectarine, uh, a Stella cherry up here, um, a beauty Japanese plum. Um, with the plum trees, there are two varieties that we carry, uh, the Japanese variety and the European variety. Um, plum trees, as long as they're blooming at the same time, you'll get pollination. Um, your Italian plum, your green gauge is going to be um, self-fertile. Uh, the Japanese plums bloom at a different time than your Europeans. So if you're going to get a plum tree, you want to make sure that you get two of the same kind if you want that, unless you get a self-fertile. The Santa Rosa is a Japanese, or yeah, Japanese plum. So, and that one is actually self-fertile, so. And it's a great pollinator, too. Um. Okay, um, this is the, is this the pear? No, this is the, the three-in-one uh, apple, uh, apple tree. So this one has three different types. Each branch is a different type of apple. Um, and when you go down there, there's a few of them that are a little bit different. So this one has a uh, Johnny Gold, a Mitsu, and a Fuji apple in this one. Um, we have a three-in-one pear as well uh, that has three different types. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not familiar with the three types of pears that are on there, um, but they, they do well here, um, which is why Lisa brought them in. Correct. Her question was, was would this cross pollinate? And that's the whole purpose of these three in ones. They put the three trees that are going to pollinate each other um, together. So. Um, there's also one down there that has more old fashioned apples. Uh, it has the Honeycrisp, the Sweet 16, and what was the other one? Um, Cortland apple. Um, so it's a nice, Cortland's a nice uh, pie apple. So uh, we have a couple of different types of three and one trees around. Are any of them, I'm sorry, any of them dwarf? Her question was, are any of the apple trees dwarf? With the tags that we, Put on the trees it'll say semi-dwarf or if it doesn't say semi-dwarf it's a regular size apple um, i have not seen a dwarf apple tree i've just seen the peaches and the nectarines as true true dwarf um, so they're going to get big unless you top them i didn't talk about blueberries let's talk about blueberries um, blueberries do well here as well. Um, we love blueberries here because we, we usually snack on them a lot. Um, blueberries need a little afternoon shade and acidic soil. 
so these guys do really well in a pot, if you can start them in a pot. Uh, they usually produce in June, mid, mid to end of June, um, and nice, big, healthy. Uh, if you have two, they pollinate each other better, but most of them are self-pollinating, so you don't need as you know, you don't have to. The really nice thing about blueberries is they have great fall colors. So if you need a nice little shrub that you can eat off of, this is a great one. They come in a variety of different sizes. The ones that are in this blue bucket are um, more uh, compact uh, size for pots and things. Uh, there are a few that actually get in that four foot tall range. So depending on the size that you want, you can use both. Rhubarb. Rhubarb grows here. Uh, right now I have uh, them in uh, this size bucket. Uh, little afternoon shade will help them from frying around the leaves, uh, but great little plant. Raspberries. Raspberries and blackberries do great here as well. Um, they're a bramble, so they're going to spread quite a bit. So make sure you have the space for them. Um, read up to, because some of them uh, produce on new wood, some of them on old wood. So there's a way of figuring out which is which. Um, grapes. Grapes do great in our rocky soil. Um, Red, uh, Ruby, uh, right now I have Ruby seedless and Thompson seedless. As the season goes on, we'll have Concord and uh, Niagara. We get wine grapes if you want to start your own little vineyard. Um, that works really well. Um, lastly, just if you're looking for a new tree, make sure it gets planted properly. Um, when you are looking at a tree, you want to dig your hole three times as wide, just as deep as it's sitting in the pot. Um, if you're going to air, you want to go up so it's sitting above the soil, opposed to below. If it sinks, you're going to drown your tree um, and it'll die, it'll suffocate. Trees need that air in the roots to, to survive. If you drown it, Obviously, it's going to kill it. Um, we mix two-thirds natural soil to one-third compost. Uh, if your soil is really bad, I suggest adding some topsoil to your mix. Uh, you know, or if you have big boulders that you're pulling out, um, you don't want the hole too rich because they have to get used to living in our crappy soil. Um, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> If the hole is too rich, your root systems, it, it'll just stay there. Ooh, nice spot, I'm not moving. So you, you want it to give it time to get rooted out and then it gets stronger and then it can push through that nasty stuff. I have a question from the live stream. Okay. Mary Ellen wants to know, what's the closest distance trees can be planted together? Okay. Um, Distance between trees, it, it'll depend on if you have a semi-dwarf or a standard tree. So semi-dwarf are going to get in that uh, 15 to 25 foot range. Unless you're going to top it, if you're going to keep it small, I wouldn't plant them any closer than 15 feet apart. So every 15 feet you can put a tree. If you have the space, I'd go 20. Okay? Yeah. How do elder, elder, oh, elder berries do here? Growth, I'll take the lady first and then I'll get you. Elderberries, how do they do here? Her question was about elderberries and how they do well here. Uh, they do. Um, it's a little early for them, but uh, we do get them usually towards the end of April. Uh, we'll start getting them in. Sir? On the fruit trees. The new growth and old growth thing, is there a rule on how you prune for fruit? Uh, his question was, is do you take new or old uh, branches off when you're trimming? 
I would say it kind of depends on which way they're growing. Um, if you have a brand new branch that's growing, if like this one was going straight in here, I would take the new branch out. You want this outward branching. If I don't, either new wood or old wood won't affect. Not on fruit trees. It, it doesn't matter new wood or old wood. Uh, it's just raspberries. There, there are some that are, are on new wood, some of them are on old wood. Uh, I think I talked about everything. Any uh, other questions? <laughs> blueberries do well. Huckleberry is a relative of blueberry. Huckleberries. I haven't heard about huckleberries here. Um, I haven't seen them, and I've been here three years, so I would say they probably don't grow. Um, but if you order it online or something, you could always try it. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Her question was about netting and if you take it off. I would actually take it off every year. Um, after, you, you know, when you start harvesting you, your, your fruit, I would take it off after you're done harvesting um, because it doesn't need to be on there, at, you know, when it's dormant. Uh, it'll also, if, if you take it off, then it won't degrade in our, our wet, you know, the snow and the, the sun. And then you just put it back on in the springtime. That's easy to say. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's easier said than done. Yes, ma'am. The persimmon tree, uh, Japanese persimmon tree. Her question was about uh, persimmons. We do get persimmons in. Um, I didn't bring them up because I didn't have one. Um, last year, there was a problem getting them in, so we only got two. Um, but I am hoping to see them soon. Um, but we do have line on them, so if they come on the truck that they're supposed to be, we should have some. Do you have any espalier? Uh, her question was about espalier, which is the really fancy, they're usually on a grid, and we did get some last year, so keep your eye out on that. Um, as far as fruit trees go, huh? Her question was, uh, is it just apple? Uh, last year we had apples and pears espaliered on it. Um, this time of year, trucks are rolling in pretty regularly. So uh, I would say if you don't see what we have, check back. Because um, if we don't have it this week, it could come in next week. Um, we kind of moved things around. I don't. If you were here last fall, we moved all the fruit trees on the roadside all the way down, um, and then the first two rows of trees coming up from the upper house are, are cherries and apples. Uh, so all the fruit trees are down there. Uh, we moved all the shade trees up to the center section here. Um, that way they can grow larger uh, and we don't have to worry about them uh, blowing down. Is a persimmon self pollinate? Good question and I don't have an answer for that. Uh, I think they are, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Could you talk a little, a little bit of basics about pomegranate trees kind of overall? Her question was the... about pomegranates and we get uh, a couple of variety of pomegranates. Um, they are zone 7, um, which is where we're at. It kind of depends on where you're at. If you're higher elevation, I would say you want to be really careful about planting them. Um, because if it gets too, you're, you're, if you're higher in elevation, you're going to get colder than most folks. Um, but they can take it down to 10, I think. 10 or 5, something like that. Do they need... Self and and most pomegranates are self pollinating. Yes. What about grapes? Her question was about grapes. All grapes are are um, uh, self fertile. They do better if you have two, um, but you can just do one if you wanted to. Uh, we have two areas where we're thinking of planting, and one gets a lot more light in three hours more a day than the other area. Is that 
working for Apple's and theirs? His question I'm was... About direct sunlight, not just daylight. Right. His question was about how much sunlight do fruit trees need. Um, the more sun for fruit trees, the better. Um, six hours or more is definitely recommended. If it's not six hours, they're not going to do well. That's correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay, Mary Ellen has another question. Okay. She says she lives in the Mountain Club area. Will fruit trees grow at this elevation? And then how far from pine trees do fruit trees need to be planted? Um, all the fruit trees are a zone seven or lower. So yes, uh, they will be fine up there. Um, the only one that wouldn't would be the pomegranate, um, maybe the persimmon and for sure the fig. Um, but your apples, your cherries, they're all very cold hardy, so that wouldn't be a problem. Um, as far as the pine tree, I would make sure it's it, it definitely out of the shade area of that pine tree, um, so it gets full sun. Yes, sir. Is there a technique to netting? Because the birds are getting under it. Very long bamboo poles. This question was about netting, and is there a proper way? Um, I think whatever works for you, but usually if you can, I always use two separate pieces on netting. I usually go up from the bottom for one and then over the top for the other, or if you got a large piece, you could wrap it all the way around. Um, some bird issues, um, I've actually used old CDs, um, drilled a little hole, tied a string to it, and just leave it in the, the tree itself, um, because every time the wind blows, it uh, flips and flashes and it'll scare them. However, they do get used to this, so if you move it, you keep it moved, you know, if you leave it in one spot, it doesn't do the trick all the time. So if every couple of weeks you kind of move it into a different area, they think something else is going on, so that they'll usually stay away. Anybody else? Question? Yes. You. All right. <laughs> uh, before we close, I want to make an announcement about next weekend. Waters will be celebrating their 57th spring open house next weekend. It starts on Friday. There's a special class on Friday afternoon from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock where we will have all kinds of spring flowers. We have people coming in from Tucson. They'll be bringing stuff that's in bloom um, as well as the stuff that we have here already. So that's from 4 to 5 on Friday. And then on Saturday, we will have another class in the morning, uh, our normal 9.30 time, where we will have vendors that will be participating in sort of a panel. And these will be people that actually developed, for example, that peach tree. And you'll have an opportunity to talk to these people, ask them questions, and so on and so forth. So it's Friday, Saturday, and then also on Sunday, the open house itself is actually all of the hours that the garden center is open, uh, but those special classes are from 4 to 5 on Friday and from 9.30 to 10.30 approximately um, on Saturday. So come and enjoy us. We'll, we'll have hot dogs and it'll be a great time. It is a great time. Um, so I'm going to say thank you for coming. Um, there are a lot of folks here. I will be happy to answer any questions that I did not get to. Um, also, we have a tremendous team that's sitting outside waiting for you guys to come out. Um, they can answer your questions as well. So if I can't get to you, please find somebody else. They can help you just as well as they, I can. Um, but I want to thank you for all for coming, and I will can see I you soon. one last question? One more question. One, one more. One more. All right. What if a fruit tree hasn't been bearing fruit? How can you get it to come back? Her question was, is what if a fruit tree isn't bearing fruit? Uh, my first question to you would be, what kind of fruit tree is it? I believe it's a pear. Um, her question is a pear. Is there only one? I think there's two. Okay. 
So I'm in the same boat she's in. Okay. <laughs> I've adopted the trees. Okay. Um, so the first thing I would do is start fertilizing. Uh, now's the time to get that fertilizer down. Um, as the buds are popping, that's when the tree really uptakes all those nutrients. So the, the most important fertilization for trees is this, this time. Uh, so get out there, get your fertilizer, get it on the ground. Um, if after you fertilize this year, if you don't, I would say either you don't have fruit tree, check to see if they're blooming at the same time. Um, if they're not, that's probably why. Um, and lastly, maybe it's just not a pear tree. I mean, <laughs> it could be something else, or like I said, you might not have the right pollinators to do the trick. If I bring in a leaf, once it comes out, you can maybe identify it? The, the problem is, is that most of them, leaves fairly, especially on apples and pear, I mean, all species kind of look the same. There's a little bit of difference. Even the fruit, somebody will bring me an apple and it's like, what is this? I don't know. <laughs> um, so it's kind of hard to say. I mean, you can look them up online and kind of get the color. We can make an educated guess. Um, it's probably the closest we can do with that. So, well, thank you all for coming and I appreciate it.